Hello, thank you for joining me once again on Obesity Universal Statisticals. On today's video tutorial, we shall be going straight to the hands-on on estimation procedure for invariant volatility modeling. And this is the part two of this video episode. Okay. Now going down to the e-views here, we have our e-view page appearing here. We have all share index, we have stock market capitalization. However, this univariate volatility modeling shall be on all share index. Okay, we shall rely on all share index for this modeling. As you can see, the data range here is from 1985 month one to 2019 month two, giving us 420 observations. The first thing we need to do is to generate the return on all share index. The reason being that investors are interested in returns of their investment. Okay, so our modeling shall be carried out on the return on all share index. Okay, so for us to generate the return on all share index, simply click generate. Okay, what I'll be typing inside this equation box here, I've already captured it on my notepad, so I'll simply copy it. Okay, then control V to paste. So what I pasted here is the return on all share index captured as RASI equals to 100 multiplied by log open bracket ASI divided by ASI minus 1. So this is how to generate the return on all share index, as you can see clearly. All right, this is how you type it to generate the return on all share index or any other variable you want to generate. And you click OK. Now, once you click OK, you discover that a new variable has been added here, which is the return on all share index. So have it here, okay? R A S I. Now, the next thing you need to do is to plot the graph of all share index as well as the return on all share index to check whether there is evidence of volatility clustering and structural breaks. Okay, for us to do that, simply you click this all share index and hold your control key button. Then you click the return on all share index, then right click to open them as a group. Okay, once it opens as a group, you can click you simply click view. Alright, go to graph. Okay, under here you go to axis, then click right, then click OK. You have your graph here. This is the this is the level form of all shine index, as you can see the graph, and this is the return form of the all shine index. Okay. Looking at this graph here, it's because there is evidence of volatility cross tearing. Okay, high vol volatility period followed by a period of tranquility, as you can see. High volatility again flow by tranquility, high volatility again flow by tranquility, high volatility, and all of those. And there's also evidence of structural breaks. The first one occurring in 1987, we we'll have another one occurring in 2000 and, uh, 1999, sorry, 1999. We we'll have another occurring in 2009 or 2008 here, as you can see here. Then we we'll have another occurring in 2014 as well as 2016. Now, what really happened in 1987 here is that Nigeria introduced structural adjustment program in 1986 with the breakpoint date occurring in 1987. Okay, we we'll have another uh, breakpoint date here, which is 1999. In this period here, Nigeria returned back to democracy. Okay, we we'll have a breakpoint date here because Nigeria returned back to democracy around this period. Then we we'll have another breakpoint date here occurring in 2000 and 2008, 2009. Let me get it appropriately. Okay, 2009 basically. It, the breakpoint date here occurred in 2009, and this was as a result of the 2007-2008 global financial crisis that impacted greatly on the capital market. Remember the all share index indicator of capital market. Okay, with the breakpoint date occurring in 2009 as a result of aftermath effect of 2007-2008 global financial crisis. In 2015, here Nigeria had another election. All right. Okay, giving us a breakpoint date of 2015 and as well as 2016, which is the aftermath effect of that 2015 election. So you discover that this graph has shown us two things basically. The first, evidence of volatility clustering and evidence of structural breaks. Okay, to save this, simply click name. I mean, simply click freeze, rather, freeze to save. Okay, then you click OK. Then, then you click name here. All right, to give it a name. Remember, you click freeze. Then click OK, then click um, name here to give it the name. We have graph one. Okay, we can save it as graph one. You can click OK. All right. So you can close this as well as this. Look at the graph we've already saved. Okay, as you can see here. All right. Now, the next thing we need to do is to check if there is evidence of serial correlation on return on all share index as well as evidence of heterocidacity. All right. To do that, simply click quick. Go to estimate equation, all right. Then type RPSI space regressed on it constant, then on it one period lagged. Okay, ensure that it's on least square method. You click OK, then you click view, then you go to residual diagnostics, select correlation Q statistics once, 
like to include 36 i leave it at default click ok now if you click ok you discover that on this result here we have most of the variables if not i mean most of the uh, values here if not all showing us that it's less than 0 0.05 indicating there is evidence of serial correlation okay as you can see virtually all of them are less than 0 0.05 showing us there is evidence of serial correlation okay now to us to check whether there is evidence of heterosexuality you simply click view go to residual diagnostics select heterosexuality test arch because i'm using um, uh, monthly data i'm going to use the number of lags to be 12 okay click ok and also here it's covered as evidence of arch effect showing us that it's evidence of heterosexuality in our return on all shine index remember the presumption test here is supposed to be that there must be serial correlation as well as there must be evidence of arch effect or evidence of heterosexuality so our return on all shine index have passed the two required pre-estimation tests showing there is evidence of serial correlation and there's also evidence of heterosexuality we can as well check if there is normal distribution on this return on uh, all share index or not so simply click view go to residual diagnostics then select histogram normality as you can see our return on all share index is not normally distributed because the probability value here is less than 0 0.05 it is not normally distributed okay so we can close this all right now we need to estimate the act 1 to act 5 the egac the gac and the gjr gac model out of which we'll be using one as our final uh, model for volatility modeling all right, for us to estimate the ARC1 to ARC5, simply click quick, then go to estimate equation. All right, then you regress your return on all share index on its constant as well as its one period lag. Okay, then under this method here, you select arch. Okay, then under the variance regressors, you type in C, which is a constant. Then under the GAC1 here, remove this one here and put zero. Now, because our return on all share index is not normally distributed, we shall be estimating the exact model using a non-normal distribution method, which is student t-test or generalized error distribution. Okay, we are going to select one of these two. But first of all, we'll run the two of them and check which of them have the lowest SIC value. Okay, now starting with student t-distribution, we'll click OK. Remember, we're on arch method. And you click OK. Now, once you click OK, your result comes up to simply go to your SIC value the SIC value is 6.110361 I already have it on my notepad 6.110361 okay for the T distribution so we'll check for the SIC value of generalized error distribution simply click quick okay then select generalized error distribution then you click OK now you look at the SIC value too the SIC value here is 6.123676 okay our SIC value here as we have on our notepad is the same okay 6.123676 so comparing the two of them you discover that the t value or rather the t distribution for the sic for t distribution here is 6.110361 is less than the generalized error distribution so we shall be relying on our, our act modeling on student t distribution here okay because it has a lower sic value as you can see here all right so what we need to do is to quickly go back to estimate and replace this error distribution with student t distribution if we're done for arc one so the next thing we need to do is for arc two okay click ok look at the sic value the sic value here is 6.123078 i have it on my notepad here then we estimate for arc three okay arc three we click ok look at the sic value also the sic value here is 6.102847 I have it here again already 6.12 point one 6.102847 6.1 which is the act 3 so we estimate for the act 4 okay you click ok all right look at the sic value the sic value here is 6.112783 we we'll have it here 6.112783 so estimating for the act 5 we we'll have you replace this with 5 okay we we'll have the SIC value here 6.123333. Okay, now look at it here. Now, comparing the Act 1 to Act 5, the one that has the lowest SIC value is the Act 3, which gave a value of 6.102847. Okay, we are going to be comparing this Act 3 with GAC 1 1 EGAC and GJR GAC model, out of which we we'll select our final model for volatility modeling. Okay, now to estimate for GAC 1 1, simply go back to estimate. 
then okay leave it on gag t gag as it is before then here we we'll type one okay replace this gag zero with one okay everything remains the same then you click okay now once you click okay you look at the sic value the sic value is 6.075069 we we'll have it here 6.0505069 okay for the egag we estimate for the egag to click estimate under here you select under the med model you select egag ensure that it's on 111 as you can see as made code one all that to one one and you click okay then you look at the sic value the sic value here is 6.057465 the sic value here okay the sic simply means swatch information criterion or swatch criterion as you can see here 6.057465 okay lastly we it's made for the gjr gak model to look at the sic value too you simply click estimate okay under here you select back the gak tag the under the threshold you replace it with one okay one 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 for the gak t gak for the i mean gjr gak okay gjr gak remember we want to estimate the gjr gak one 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 okay every other thing remains okay the same you click, click, click okay and once you click OK, you scroll down, you look at the SIC value here. SIC value here is 6.086158. The SIC value here is 6.086158 as found on my notepad. Now, comparing the selected Act 3 model, the GAC, the EGAC, and the GGR GAC, the one that has the lowest SIC value here is EGAC, as you can see. The SIC value here is 6.057465. 6.057465. Lower than Act 3, which was our chosen model from Act 1 to Act 5, lower than GAC, lower than GJR GAC. So our volatility estimation shall be carried out using the EGAC. Okay, simply go back to estimate again. Then we'll select back our EGAC. Then you click OK. Okay, as you can see, look at our EGAC result here, as we've had earlier on. Now, from this EGAC result, we'll carry out a post emission test to ensure there is no serial correlation as well as there is no arch effect or no heterosynthesis. Alright, to do that, simply click view, go to corruption diagnostics, I mean residual diagnostics, sorry, residual diagnostics, select Corregan Q statistics, click it once, lag 36 at default. Now, if you look at the probability values here, it's for the majority of them are greater than 0 0.05. Okay, showing that there is no serial correlation on this EGAC model. There is no serial correlation on this EGAC model, as you can see. Even though a few of them here are less than 0 0.05, the majority of them, if you scroll down, are not significant. Or majority of them are here greater than 0 0.05. Okay? Alright, what it simply means that here is that our model here, our EGAC model here is free of serial correlation. It's free of serial correlation. Why? Because most of the probability value here are greater than 0 0.05. Now, as for us to check for heterostasis, you simply click view. Then go back to residual diagnostics. HLM. Ensure that it's on arch. Here I'll replace it with 12. 1, 2, okay, 12. Since I'm using monthly observation, then click OK. Now I look at the probability value under the F statistics. Alright, discover that there is no arch effect or there is no um, heterosexuality. There is no evidence of heterosexuality in this EGAC model. Alright, as you can see, there is no heterosexuality. Look, the probability value here is greater than 0 0.05. So our EGAC model has passed the two post estimation test showing that there is no serial correlation as well as there is no heterosexuality in this model. Okay, we can click estimate to go back to our EGAC model. Now we need to generate the volatility series of this OSHA index. The volatility series of this OSHA index. To generate that, simply click PROC. Then go to make residual series. Okay, under here, name here, you write VRASI. Okay. Volatility of return on all share index Then you click OK. Now once you click OK, you discover that a new series appear here as you can see here. I'll have the data from here. You can close this and simply check. As you can see here, look at our uh, volatility of return on all share index. Okay, look at the volatility series of return on all share index. Let's say you're looking at the impact of volatility of all share index on economic growth. You regress the economic growth on this volatility series of uh, return on all share index. Okay. This is the volatility series of all of uh, returns on all share index. All right, you can as well plot the graph to look at the evidence of structural breaks and volatility clustering. Okay, click OK. As you can see, there is evidence of uh, volatility clustering, high volatility, flow by period of tranquility, high volatility, tranquility, and all. And you can see there is evidence of structural breaks as we found earlier on, occurring in 1987, 2009. 
1999, sorry, 2009, 14, and 16. Okay, so basically, this is how to generate the volatility series of return on all share index from the final model we are to be selecting from, which is the EGAC model. Now, for the interpretation of the effect of these shocks and asymmetric behavior on the volatility return on all share index, as well as the left its significant implication, kindly watch the part three of this video episode, okay, to get the interpretation of the effect of these shocks as well as the uh, asymmetric behavior on the volatility of all share index, return on all share index, kindly watch the part three of this video for its interpretations, okay. If this is the first time of watching this video, kindly click the subscribe button to get video updates on various methods of estimations, okay. Thank you for listening.